Hello guys, so one of the jobs we've got in preparation for the exciting upcoming growing season is preparing an area in this tunnel for our seed propagation. Propagation, sorry. Um, as part of that, my parents came over the other day, they were giving us a hand clearing out this tunnel. This has just been a bit of a catch all the last few years. Um, we've got plans to make it really nice, uh, perennial uh, system in here one day with all fruit trees and citrus and nice pathway up the middle and all that kind of thing. But for now, we're just using it um, as the space because we haven't got time to do that right now. So what I plan to do is build a propagation table along the side here. Um, and I'm going to be using some reclaimed timbers that I've been picking up, um, some that have been used before that I've bought for really cheap, and I've also got uh, a lovely big pile of stuff that I've just been collecting over the years, uh, four by four, six by four posts and things like that, uh, which have been free. Um, and I've got a lovely pile of large uh, cladding over here as well, which was left over from when I was doing the cladding on our shed. Um, and these are kind of like all off cut bits. And again, that was stuff I, I picked up from a building site that was being burnt. So uh, our plans for a few months time is to have an actual dedicated propagation tunnel, uh, which we've got from Premier Polytunnels. We're just a little bit behind putting it up right now. So I'm gonna make this uh, table along here in a way that can be easily dismantled. And so when we put it into that one, I can dismantle it, put it together and also kind of change the sizes if I need to, to make it fit. So I'm just gonna have a look through our scrap pile of wood here to see if I can find some posts. Roughly thinking height for this, kind of like a kitchen kind of worktop height. So maybe around about 90 centimeters, something like that. Around about a meter. We'll, we'll just see what we can find in here. Previous to this, this has just been in a big pile on the floor. So getting to anything you need has been a nightmare. So I'm glad this is already uh, coming in handy, this little kind of box. So I think these will be nice. I think these were off some kind of like heavy duty type pallets at some point I've broken up. So I'm hoping because our span of this table is gonna be 3.7 meters, I'm thinking two legs at either end and probably two in the middle. So hopefully I've got six of these in here somewhere. Doesn't really matter if they're all identical size and kind of the dimensions to be honest with you for what this is. There's another one. Gotta be careful not to go through the plastic here. Just uh, spent a few hours yesterday going around putting some repair tape on a couple of the tunnels because we've had, um, Laurie thinks it's a cat actually, because there's, there's a black cat that's always running around this area. And we have a lot of uh, mice and voles and stuff. So it's been clawing at the sides. It's a bit higher than what a rabbit would do. Um, and we don't think it's the dogs. So uh, yeah, that's a bit of a pain. Another good free resource for this stuff, guys, as well, is whenever I go to the timber yard, and quite often, in all honesty, I'll just go for one thing sometimes, purely for this reason. It's because they have big bins at the end of each aisle, and a lot of the builders, carpenters and stuff go in, they'll just cut what they need so they don't have to get rid of the wastage, and there's just piles like this at the end of each row, and they just have to get rid of it. So they're more than happy um, as long as you're buying something for you to take it. So absolutely great for just, you know, making stuff like this, because quite often you need to cut stuff up to smaller sizes anyway. All right, guys, so I've decided that the overall depth that I'd like the table to be is 70 centimetres or 700 millimetres. And that is just kind of like enough space, I think, that you're not having to lean over too much with heavy trays. Um, it's mainly going to be lorry doing it as well. And a lot of them are quite heavy, especially the root trainer ones. Um, so I just thought I'd mention a few uh, tips that I've picked up over the years of just 
basic kind of making things like this. And I'm hardly a high level carpenter, but it might be handy for any of you guys who are kind of like not proficient DIYers and you kind of want to be making stuff with pallets or whatever else. Um, obviously tape measure is a definite, you need one of those. Um, but something that I've learned the hard way over the years is just having a really good set of just uh, battery powered tools like this, so handy. Um, these are Makita ones. They're fairly kind of like the budget range. Um, I think each of these individual units are kind of around about a hundred pound each. So it's, it's fairly expensive, but if you're doing stuff like this all the time, it's so worth it. The batteries clip on and off. They charge in about half an hour and they'll go pretty much all day with these kind of tools. <coughs> and especially you want, I find handy to have a drill, which you can just have your drill bit in all the time, but then having a, an actual impact driver. And this is the kind that kind of make that kind of like D -d 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 noise. Um, kind of like what you hear in like a car garage when they're doing the wheels. And that's just really handy for getting screws in. It kind of impacts them in. Um, if you use something like this to put the screws in, you find all the time it's just spinning in the head of the screw and often kind of rounds the uh, threads, the head off the threads. Um, so really great for that. And probably the best tool that has just revolutionized my life is this. A circular saw or they're called skill saws often um, and so if we take the example of we want these two to be 70 or 700 so if we stick our tape measure on there I try and go kind of along one edge so the gaps kind of like the same there as it is here so you don't want your, your tape across like that because that's going to give you a kind of false reading so keep that straight Mark 70 with our pencil on there. This again, amazing tool. Um, I think it's called a carpenter's square or set square sometimes. Um, literally this type's nice as well because it's so strong. You get the kind of old fashioned ones for woodwork where it's kind of wood on one side and then just the metal coming out. And when they're just in a bag getting moved around, they can get a bit bent. So. These are amazing. And literally put that on in line with our pencil mark there. That gives us our straight edge that we can mark along. And cutting with a handsaw again, I used to find really difficult getting it straight and it's quite knackering. So literally with our skill saw now, we can use this as a guide, which is where it comes in so handy. So. We put that on there, which gives us our right angle. And then I can line this up with our cutting mark on the skill saw. And then I hold this then, and that acts as a guide for this to cut straight. So we can go. Straight across. I forgot yesterday I changed the depth of this. You can adjust how deep you want this to cut. So I need to make that a bit deeper. We'll go through there again. There we go. And then we have on there a beautiful square cut. So when we're just putting stuff together, it just makes it much nicer and much more pleasing as well when everything fits together square and nicely. Also having a battery for each of the tools as well is again, a bit of a game changer before I only had two batteries trying to use these free tools. So when you're doing a job, um, whatever you're making, constantly having to remove the battery from one to the other is a bit of a pain. And these batteries are fairly expensive, um, but they do last. I've tried the cheap ones and they're not very good, the kind of aftermarket ones. Like often you'll find there is a, a limitation to how deep these can cut. I think this is just over two inches. So with stuff like this, I do my mark and then follow that round. 
round the whole way. Like that. And then I can cut from this side and then flip it round and finish it off with the line we've got on the back edge as well. Like that. Okay, so we've got our legs cut now and our, our bits which are gonna dictate the depth of the table. Um, so just stick that on there and try and line that up as square as possible with the edge of this leg down here. And another little tip is I always like to do a pilot hole or pre-drill before I put the screws in and I've also, just because I can tend to be quite an untidy person when I'm working and that, um, having screws in just their own container I find really handy. Um, generally I find there's about three sizes really that I tend to use the most. And I use five millimeter um, by 50 is a really handy size. And five millimeter by 70 is a very handy size as well and five millimeter by a hundred millimeter um, and they are just kind of like the really good sizes for using with like two by fours or four by twos four by fours six by twos that kind of thing so i'm going to do a pre-drill through here now and the reason i do that is because if we don't the wood very often can split especially if you're you're drilling near the edges of the wood as well. And if you're um, really anal with trying to make everything look nice, you can put your square down there and just lightly mark a pencil line so both of those end up in a straight line as well. And I'll just go through the initial bit of wood, not down into the um, bit below as well. And that's using a drill, which is very slightly smaller than the diameter of the screw. So you don't want to drill a hole bigger than the screw, ideally. Then we can use our impact driver there, make sure our screw is long enough. So for this, I'll use the 70. I could, in fact, actually go up to 100, but there's, there's a good inch or, or more actually going through there into that, so I'm happy with that. And that's that impact noise you hear there I was talking about earlier. And I'll probably just leave one there for now, and then I can um, make sure it's straight in a minute. Okay, that'll be one end, and then I'll do the same, repeat the process for the other now. I'm gonna lay these out, and in an ideal world at this point, I would have someone to help me, but I'm a bit stubborn, and Laurie's off doing something, so I don't really wanna disturb her. So I'll see if I can do it by myself.
And these have got a bit of a rough edge one edge, so I really want our flat edge up. If I can try and do this without putting a hole through the plastic. Oh. Okay, lovely. Hit the plastic there, hasn't gone through. Okay. All right, let's see if we can flip this around then without breaking it. See along this join here, I've got, um, we're covering the span of both this timber and this one, so I'm going to put four in there on the corners just for a little bit of added strength. Let's just turn this very slightly to make it square. It's always nice to do things to the best of your ability. So we may as well do it properly. Something that quite often happens if you're not in the screw um, completely straight, it will spin and it breaks these little ends here. So um, these just pull out on these kind of impact drivers and then you buy these in packets and for these five millimeter screws, um, it's the Posi PZ Drive 2. Um, that's the packet you need and they just go in there. I find these smaller ones much easier to use than the long ones. You get long ones as well. And they just push back in there like that. And on these screws, you know it's a posi drive, if I can get that to focus. And with these screws, you know they're the posi drive because they have those little marks in the corner of the cross there. You can see four of them that stick out. All right, this last one, the ground isn't level in here, so it's um, sitting right up like that. So to get the level of this, I'm sort of digging all the ground for now. And um, when it's finished, I'll just put this on some like paving slabs or something. So a decision I've got to make now then is, do I have them going long ways like this and have to add in some supports but they don't quite go the full length and some of these bits are split so I'd have to rip them down into more like planks or do I cut them smaller and have them all going across that way. I just want to use this stuff because I, I do have a load of like pallet slats but pallet wood is like a very soft wood and it doesn't last long especially if you're soaking it all the time. Um, Whereas this is a bit more durable. It's been on the side of a building, I think for about 
20, 30 years and it's still completely solid. Um, so yeah, this would probably be better. I guess if I cut it long ways like that, I would then have the holes in between for letting the water through. So that might be better. So I've actually decided to cut them into small slatted pieces going across this way. And I'm adding a central support as well because where this wood is spanning a long distance, it was kind of bowing out in the middle a little bit. So this will just hold it in exactly the same so I can cut all the slats to the same length. Right, so the distance for our slats that are going to go across is, I think we go about one centimetre over, so 79 centimetres we want. The nice thing is now it allows me to use a lot of these smaller pieces that some of them have got splits, some of them are quite cupped, so can have a good pick through now and make sure we have plenty of nice flat ones. I thought it might be worth just showing you guys um, how I'm getting square bits of boards out of these kind of things that maybe you're, you might be thinking of doing something similar and you've just got a pile of old wood. Um, none of the edges are square on this. Um, if you take this one for example here, it's all just completely off. So what I'm basically doing is we do have one fairly good edge on there but it's not actually straight in itself so if we were to start from the beginning here what I'll do first is just basically make a line across there and that's just to give a roughly um, horizontal edge to the way the board's going cutting off this end manky bit so if we take that one off first Okay, now I can use this edge I've just cut here as my kind of datum edge. So if I put my set square on here, this edge is kind of running in a bit. So I'm gonna come back a little bit here because we need to go to 79, I'm cutting these. So really, I wanna be coming into around about there, I would say. So. Draw a line as long as the set square there, so that gives us a 90 degree line to our first datum edge we cut. And then I can put our straight edge, in this case is a um, level, line it up perfectly with that line, draw a line all the way along, like that. And then I can measure along there now to 79, which is the length we want this to be, which is there. Put another mark on that intersects our line we just drew along there. And then what I will do now is I can put my set square on here parallel to that line we just drew. So matching that on there as good as we can. And then with the end of it in line with our mark for the 79, and then I can draw another line across there. Okay. And now I'll just cut out these two lines we did first. Let's cut that one off there. Okay, so now we have our 79 centimetres length and both of these two corners now are 
perfectly square with our level. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. So now what I can do is just come along um, and make it whatever thickness I can get out of this. And it's a bit manky on the edge, a bit rotten there. There's a crack through there. So this will be a bit of a narrower one. So if, we, if I spin that round, that crack is at just over 10 centimetres. So if we just make this one 10 centimetres, Measure 10 in from our, from our straight edge we cut there. Measure 10 in at the other end. Then I can put our straight edge along there again, if I turn it this way so you can see. Draw that between our two marks. Do another line across there. Then we'll cut that one off and we should have a nice square little piece. Okay, so there you go. So out of um, you know, out of something that was a bit manky. We got a nice square little board there. And yeah, we're continuing the process. I need probably another, what? One, two, three, four, five or six. So yeah, carry on. Okay guys, so that is the table finished. So um, yeah, really happy with how it's turned out actually. It is proper solid. You could run and jump on this if you wanted to. Um, we will position it back a bit further. And these are some of the kind of general seed trays we, we like to use. I think one of these, Laurie said, is the Charles Dowden one, uh, which she's really keen to try out. Um, we love these trays from Container Wise. They really are brilliant. And, the nice thing with this is they kind of can fit two on that way now, so we can have a row going along. Um, we like to use these quite heavy duty. Um, they're the same as what heated propagators come in. They've, the heated ones have got a cable in the back um, and there's a heating element under here, but you can get them just like without that. It's just really good for, um, you know, sitting trays in with water in the bottom to keep them moist. Um, so yeah, kind of like, have a big row of those along the back maybe, these along the front or you know however you want to do it really so yeah that's great and uh, yeah went with about a centimetre gap in between the slats in the end um, which I think is quite nice just to let water through because we'll be doing a lot of watering on here as well. I'm really glad as well that I managed to use the rest of this. I'm not sure whether it's larch or western red cedar but if you're a bit of a wood expert Maybe you could let us know in the comments below. Um, but it is really, although it would be probably classified as a softwood, it is really um, durable and kind of rot resistant, which is great. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is usually up until literally the last month or so, I've been obsessed with treating things, treating wood. Um, wood preservative or creosote traditionally, it's something my granddad used to use. Um, especially stuff like this, it's getting wet all the time. I'd be thinking like, it's just a complete waste of time making it. It's gonna get wet and end up rotting, especially when you're watering on it. But the more and more we kind of learn and look into the impacts of all these chemicals, only last night actually, I was looking into um, the safety data sheet of a wood preserver, a common one that they sell in all the um, local hardware stores. Um, and not really mention on a massive mention on the back of kind of like dangers. It says, you know, wear protective gloves and things like that um, and harmful to the aquatic life, which, you know, you'd expect most paints to be if you did tip it in there. But I ended up looking online and 
absolutely shocking and scary, the list of chemicals which are um, carcinogenic, um, those that, if you come into contact with it, can cause damage to unborn babies. Um, Long-term aquatic damage um, doesn't readily biodegrade in the environment. So, you know, you're spilling drips or if you paint something and, you know, it's getting rained on and some of that is leaching out. It's really scary and I, I just can't believe that, well, I can believe it actually, now we're coming to learn a lot more about how things actually work, that these products can be approved. And like, for sure, they still have a place because, you know, you don't want to be spending tens of thousands on um, a wood structure, which if it's going to be in contact with the ground is going to rot out. You know, if, if you can not have to build the whole thing again in six or seven years time and it's going to last 30, 40 years, then, you know, you could definitely argue it's kind of in some cases worth the risk if it's applied properly. But, you know, I've been using this stuff and I've noticed over the last couple of days I'm using it and then I've got like a really weird taste in my mouth at the end of the day, which is what spurred me on to actually looking into it. And yeah, so it's very, very difficult for me, really difficult actually, because normally I would have treated every part of this kind of at least twice before screwing it all together. So all the bits under here would be treated, but just have to now accept that it is what it is and you know things naturally biodegrade ultimately what these products are is they're um antifungal fungi is like one of the main things that causes um wood to rot down especially when it's in contact with the earth so knowing that we are, have so much kind of bacterial and fungal life inside of us which aren't even kind of human cells uh, it's just obvious really that it's you know, best to be avoided. So, you know, if I have to end up rebuilding it again in five or six years, so be it, really. Um, yeah, I guess it's just acceptance. Um, you know, there's definitely cases where I would still, if it's uh, pressure treated when you buy it, I guess that's, you know, going to be better than having to come into direct contact yourself applying it. Um, but I will very seldom use it now and I'll for sure definitely be wearing like a respirator mask and, you know, one of those proper little like suits if I need to use it in the future. But best to avoid as much as possible, I think. But yeah, overall, really chuffed. Hopefully Laurie will be happy with it as well. So we'll be set up for the season. I've used screws for all of this. So um, when we need to move it, although it's still gonna be a little bit of a mission, we can undo it all and move it into its final home later on. So yeah, hopefully you guys may have got something from the video. Um, don't normally film this kind of thing, although this is what I'm mainly doing, probably 90% of my time doing little projects like this. So yeah, if you've enjoyed it, or if you'd just prefer to see only the gardening stuff, do let me know in the comments below. And yeah, thank you very much. And very excited about the new season and Peace and plants.